this video is going to show you how to thread the Janome DC6030 machine. Most machines follow a very similar path. At, in our classroom, we use these big cones of thread because it's the most economical way to buy thread. And so it does not go on this spool holder. This is for a small spool, but we're going to use the big cone. So that's why we have all these thread stands. And this is going to go right on the thread stand. Most of the thread stands, it just loops in like that. But some of our thread stands are this style. And you have to put it right through the thread stand like that. Okay. Either way is easy. From the thread stand, you can see on top of the machine, this has a one and an arrow going to the left and down. And that's the direction your thread has to go under this and down. We don't use this silver disc until we're winding a bobbin. Then we follow this arrow down with the two. We go around with the arrow of the three, and then up here. Up in this section, you'll see the arrow coming up on the right, down on the left, and there's a four with that silver hook. You can open up the side of the machine here so that you can see right inside it. This is the thread uptake lever. Bring that silver hook right up to the top. If it's not at the top, you're gonna just turn this wheel towards you. This is the flywheel or hand wheel, and we only ever turn it towards you, not away. Okay, so to bring that silver hook up, you're going to turn it towards there, all the way up to the top. You're going to take your thread up on the right, down on the left. You need to make sure that the thread is right in the end of this. If it doesn't come right into the end there, it's going to come out of that hook and you're going to have terrible stitching. From here, we're going to go, we're going to go straight down now, straight down from that thread uptake lever. And we want to tuck the thread in behind here right in behind this. On the face of the machine, you'll see that, that five and showing the thread kind of coming around like that. That's just, that's indicating that you go right behind this. There's a hook right at the top of your needle and your thread needs to go in there as well. Both this five and we'll call this six. Those are both really important. If your thread's not in there, when you're sewing, it can get all tangled in this area. And then we have to take tweezers and pull out the gobs of thread from there. After the five and six, now it's the needle. And again, you want to make sure your needle's at the highest position. And to just give yourself a bit more space here, you want to lower the presser foot so you have a tiny bit more space. It also helps at this point to turn the machine on so that you have a little bit of light here. Can you see that little black lever? That's how I'm lifting and lowering the presser foot. If you just can't pull the thread, lift up your presser foot again. It releases tension off the thread to give you a bit more to work with. Now, you're going to be tempted to lick your thread, but we want to be more hygienic than that. If it's fuzzy at all, it's going to be really hard to get through the needle. So using some sharp scissors, give your thread a haircut. And then putting it through the needle. A lot of machines have threaders here. They don't last as long as the machine lasts, so you need to be able to thread this on your own. When you're trying to thread a machine, sometimes people hold the thread way too far back like that, and it's too floppy. You need to hold the thread a little bit closer to the end. So first I just need to get the thread lined up with the little eye of the needle, which can take some patience. And on a machine, the eye of the needle is at the point, not at the other end, if you're just used to hand sewing. Once it's a little bit in the eye, now I'm going to kind of do this to push it through. There we go. Okay, good. Pull that all the way over to your right. Lift up again. Tuck that in between the toes of the foot and let it, it should stay off to your right like that. Good. Second thing we have to do is the bobbin. We have this bright red nail polish all around our bobbin window, just so if they fall on the floor, we can see them. See this black rectangle beside the bobbin case? Push that little black rectangle off to the right and this pops out. Now you're gonna take a bobbin. Now I'm using crazy colors so that you can see when I start sewing, but take a bobbin that your thread and bobbin should match your fabric. You wanna have your bobbin like this, where it's coming off the top of the bobbin to the left. So if you're looking at it like this, it's coming off the top to the right. Flip it over. The thread is coming off the top to the left into the bobbin well. And then you want to tuck your thread underneath this silver finger. See that? Tuck it underneath that. And then it follows around. Now here there's a pathway that you can see. 
In this pathway has an arrow going that way with one, and an arrow coming back and in with two. And you just want to follow that pathway, and it'll cut your thread there. Good. Now the bobbin window goes back in, close up the side of the machine, and you're ready to sew. Can you see these teeth under here? When I move the wheel, those teeth move up and down. And you can see that as I do this, if I move the wheel toward me, you can see the pink thread coming through the bobbin window and it's going to pass over that bobbin. You see that? And that's how a stitch is formed. That also helps draw up the bobbin thread for us. So now we've got the bobbin thread and the top thread on top of the machine. So now I'm going to put those threads off to the right. Are you ready to sew? Let's just look at some of the other things on this machine that you need to get to know. This is the stitch selector here, so you can choose any of these stitches except for 99% of our sewing, we're just going to use stitch number one and stitch number seven. One is the straight stitch. You can see that the needle is in the middle here. On stitch number two, it moves the needle to the left, and we do use that one when we're putting in a zipper. Um, we use stitch number seven when we're zigzagging and for grade eights you're going to use the zigzag to finish your edges but the grade nines you'll be on the sergers. The grade nines will also use the buttonhole stitches when we get to buttons and buttonholes. See the letter in the corner here? That's what presser foot you need to use. So the buttonhole foot is R. The presser foot, which is this over here, has to be the correct one. So we're, for the stitches that we mo mainly use, it's A. Um, and so that A just stays in here. If you're trying any of the other stitches, we're going to ask that you don't try those right now because it does um, its best with the other presser foot and you could end up breaking a needle. Good? Okay. This is the tension dial and it should be either on three or four, but basically uh, we almost never touch this unless you have a problem with the tension. It just should, it should stay on three or four, wherever it is. Up here, these pluses and minuses, this is, can you see up here? It's got the zigzag getting wider and wider. This is the width of the stitch. So on a straight stitch, right now I'm on stitch number one, I've got the A presser foot, um, and so that is a straight stitch. It has no width, so this doesn't make a difference. You can change that, it doesn't make a difference to your stitch. It's a straight line, has no width. This one though, is the length of the stitch. So if I increase that, it makes the stitch longer. Good? All right. On stitch seven, that's our zigzag stitch, the width does make a difference, right? The zigzag would get wider and wider. Um, and normal zigzag, I, I like to use three and three for a zigzag. Good? So that's your stitch width and length selector. This is your speed and you can turn it right down. When you're a beginner, definitely you want it right down. As soon as you get comfortable though, start nudging it up. This cuts your thread at the end of a seam. It's pretty handy, but you can also just cut with scissors because this leaves about an inch of thread and we just don't like to see that all over a finished product. It's nicer, you'll have to trim with scissors anyway, but this can be handy when it's a seam that's not gonna show. This one is needle up and needle down. So watch the needle. When I hit that, it goes down or up. So at the end of a seam, you want to end with your needle up. Um, if you've stopped and somehow it's needle down, you can just, if it's like that when you've stopped a seam, you can hit that to have your needle up. When we pivot, you want to have your needle down to pivot. Good. This one is, we're not really going to use that much at all. It's just a back tack on the dot kind of thing. This reverse button, like a U-turn, that's how we do what's called a back tack at the beginning and end of every seam. We're going to go back and forth with that to secure it. That's how we tie a knot with machine sewing. This is the foot pedal or foot control. And that goes gently onto the floor. They, they do break, so be careful with them as you put that onto the floor. Okay, so let's sew a normal seam. On a normal seam, we put the good sides of fabric together. We call it right sides together. And that, we put it that way, we sew inside out so that the seams end up on the inside and that the outside looks good. So I've got my edges together, right sides together. I'm switching back to stitch one. It defaults to three and a half width, two and 2.4 length. To start sewing, I wanna lift up the presser foot. That's this, so that I can get my fabric edges under. There together, I can put a few pins if I want to hold that. And I want to put this edge to 
what's called the 5 8 line or the 15 line. So it's marked with a 10 and a 20. The line in between there is the 15 line. So your, your needle would be 15 millimeters from the edge of the fabric or equivalent to 5 eighths of an inch. And then I put my presser foot down. Notice I'm starting with the needle at the beginning of the fabric. Sometimes people start here and then you're missing that whole first probably, probably almost an inch. So bring that back so that this edge is even with the needle. This edge is at the 15 line. Good, right there. Starting with the needle up in the highest position. So going slow, I'm going to do a few stitches and then I can hit that reverse button and hold it while I go back a few stitches. So that's a back tack. That's how we begin and end every single seam. The feed dogs are going to move that fabric along. I'm not pushing the fabric through. Those feed dogs, those little teeth underneath that we looked at are going to be pushing that fabric along like this, right? Um, I don't want to push or pull the fabric. That can really distort your stitching. All my hands are for is steering and my foot is controlling when the machine starts and stops. And my eye is staying right there at the 15 line. That's how I can sew straight. If my eye comes up, my foot comes up. I never sew when I'm not looking at the machine. Now that's not even half speed yet. So keep your speed low. And then when you come right down to the edge and you're going to do another reverse and back tack. Good. Hit needle up. Lift up your presser foot with that little lever. Pull your thread out, pull it about six inches or so, and then you can use the thread cutter on the machine. Most of the machines have a thread cutter right on the side there. Some of them are missing the blade, which is a bit of a headache. You'll have to use scissors to cut your thread, but then your thread will come right back over to the right and you're ready for your next seam. If you cut with scissors though, cut at least about five or six inches away from the needle. If you cut your thread too close to the needle, the next time you sew, it's gonna come right out of the needle and you'll have to re-thread. <laughs>